You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network. For more quality options programs, visit www.theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app, available in iTunes and on Google Play. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at twitter.com slash options, facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. Welcome to the options playbook, the program where we break down cutting edge option strategies and explain how you can incorporate them into your own portfolio. Whether you're looking to grow your capital with some offensive maneuvers or protect your investments with defensive plays, you can find them all in the Options Playbook. The Options Playbook is brought to you by Trade King Group. Anything mentioned today is for educational purposes and is not a recommendation or advice. Options involve risk. Please refer to tradeking.com slash ODD to review additional risks involved with trading options. Securities offered through Trade King LLC, member FINRA and SIPC. Now let's open the playbook and get started. Welcome to Options Playbook Radio. I'm your host, Brian Overby, Trade King Senior Options Analyst and author of the Options Playbook. Well, last week we looked at a bull call spread around earnings and smuckers. We did it a very, as a very uh, speculative type, type trade. We looked at a one-day trade around earnings, so either it went up or it didn't. And we're going to talk a little bit about that trade. So if you'd like to follow along at home, you can always go to long spread with calls and that's going to be uh the bull call spread that we talked about there's many different names for it or as always you can go to optionsplaybook.com look under the strategy tab and look for long call spreads and then uh lastly you can go to the kindle edition if you have that and go to the table of contents and look specifically for that strategy inside the table of contents okay so Let's recap last week's trade, and then we also have another stock that we're going to look at that's going to be announcing earnings. We only have a few more, uh, I should say, weeks uh, before the last round of earnings is done. And today we're going to actually look at Gap Stores, uh, symbol G is in George, P is in Paul, S is in Sam, GPS. And uh, we're going to look at a bull call spread in that also, or otherwise known as a long Long call spread. So the focus is going to be on spreads today around earnings. So let's get talking about the last trade from last week and look exactly what happened with the trade. Um, as always on Options Playbook Radio, uh, nothing's meant to be a recommendation. We're just trying to learn from the trades. And some of the trades that you can learn the most from are ones that uh, don't work out exactly as you were expecting. And if you look at what happened to Smuckers, they came out and announced earnings uh, before the open on February 17th. Now, they came out and announced earnings before the open on February 17th. Uh, Smucker's symbol is SJM, and the stock uh, closed the day previously at 137.84. Now, the expected move on the market was approximately uh, 4%, and the stock did make that expected move, but unfortunately, it went to the downside, and we were looking for the move on the upside. But we went out and uh, placed a five-point wide trade. The market was at 137.29 when we placed the trade. Uh, we were thinking that we could pay a net debit to the account of approximately uh, $2.60. When we looked at that trade, it was about $2.60 on a five-point wide trade. So our maximum risk, our maximum upside was $2.40, and our maximum downside was $2.60. We did it on a one-by-one -one spread, so that's $260 plus the commissions to put on the trade. And you always got to think about commissions when you're doing multiple-leg trades. Okay, so... 
what happened was the stock actually opened down and let's just there, there really wasn't much that we could do they were announcing before the open on the 17th and our option contracts were expiring on the close of the market on that day so when it opened up so the market opened after the earnings announcement down down about what the expected move was and it opened at 132.42 on that day so based on the opening uh, the stock was down about five dollars after the announcement happened at that point in time, as we said on Options Playbook Radio, it's going to be kind of an all or none scenario. So I would have done nothing. Uh, the you Basically, you were pretty close to the max loss. You might have been able to sell and get out and maybe salvage uh, 15, 20 cents on the open. But the good news was that if you did nothing, the market actually came back. And at one point in time, the market, the high on the day was 137.03. Now, considering that the market closed the day before at 137.84, uh, there was a point in time where it's almost like earnings didn't even happen because the market made this big jump down, but it came climbing all the way back. So it would have been easily, if you would have stuck around, to maybe get out with uh, a uh, 80 or 90 cent loss on the trade and salvage some of it. And, and you should have, if there's any point in time where the market got back to close to where the stock was, you should have been thinking about getting out and salvaging whatever. Um, if I could have sold the trade for 50 cents, I would have probably closed it out at that point in time. But if you would have stuck around until the close of the market, the market actually closed at 135.95. So if you wrote it all day long uh, and you went to the close, you would have made $2 on this trade and you would have only lost uh, 60 or 70 cents because you paid $2.60 for it. And it closed at 135.95 almost 36 135.36 so you were very close to break even on this trade if you would have just hung it out and you would have uh, looked at the trade very rarely do you get that to happen on a earnings announcement but we did do a trade where we you know we set ourselves up we had a 50 50 bet right down the middle we paid 260 for it we're hoping to make 240 or we knew we could lose the 260 so now let's go on out and look at a long call spread around earnings we talked about gap stores on our midday call under the trade king webex platform Form on Tuesday the 21st. Now, if we look at Gap stores, they're going to be announcing earn earnings very soon too. So let's look at a longer term long call spread. And this is going to allow us to be able to adjust this trade. But the earnings are going to be announced uh, the 23rd on Thursday. So we're going to set up our trade today, which is Wednesday the 22nd while the market's open, and we're going to go further out in time. We did not have that luxury with Smuckers because Smuckers only had monthly expirations. So we worked with what we could. Here, we're going to go out on Gap Stores. They have weekly expirations, and we have many different ones to choose from. So we're going to actually do the March 17th expiration, and we're going to look at a 23-day trade. So we're going to set this trade up. We're going to look at a long call spread, and we're going to do something different. We're going to sell an at-the-money one and buy a more in-the-money con option contract. Now, the main reason why we're going to look at this is if we're wrong on our forecast, I want to be able to roll this trade into a butterfly. So I'm hoping that uh, we're going to give a little bit of play in this underlying. We're going to look at what happens after earnings. But before we get too far ahead, what we really want to look at is – what's the expected move because that's going to adjust the strikes that we want to trade so if we look at the stock right now is at 2471 so if we go out and we take the 25 strike call and the 25 strike put the most at the money call and the most at the money put and we see that that's trading for uh 56 cents on the call 
And on the put, we're talking about 85 cents. So the most at the money straddle is $1.41. All right, now we have a little bit of intrinsic value, so we gotta be cognizant of that. But on a percentage basis, that means that the marketplace is looking for, a, let's call it a 5% move uh, after earnings on Gap Store. So that's that's a fairly substantial move. That was the type of move that we had in Smuckers, even though Smuckers was a much uh, higher price stock. So here's what we're going to look to do is we want to uh, sell the juice. We want to sell some of the premium of the at the money option contract. And we're going to buy a just in the money contract. We set a dollar and a half points is what the expected move might be. So let's go a dollar and a half point wide. So if we pull up our expirations, I'm going to go out to the March 17th expiration. And the market will, will say it's at 24.70. So we want to sell the 25, the most at the money option contract, and we're going to buy the 23.50. So right now, the midpoint of that trade is 85 cents. And that means we just want the market to basically stay above 25. But if it does come back down, what we're going to look to do is roll this trade into a butterfly. And we're hoping that we still have enough juice because we've gone out far enough in time that we can actually pull off a butterfly for a ne decent net debit to the account. So you have $1.50 is the maximum. That's the width of the spread. We're going to pay $0.86 cents for that. So we're talking a $0.64 cent profit potential if we can fill at the midpoint of $0.86, cents, which we can't always do. Uh, you know, But the midpoint, this is a fairly tight market, and there's some decent volume in open interest and round earnings. I would expect that we should be able to trade somewhere close to that midpoint. And we'll come back after earnings next week and we'll see about Gap Stores and see where it's at. And I'm going to set an alert on Gap Stores. And if it's down, I plan to come back in and look at rolling the trade into the butterfly. So after the earnings announcement, I will do a screenshot and see where the market is at. And then we'll talk about that trade. But if it goes up, life is simple. We're just going to ride out the trade. We're going to try to make as much of that 64 cents as we can. And we'll move on from there. And for the bears on the retail sector, let's also look at the same trade approximately. We'll use the same strike, so it'll be the same width, but we're going to do it with put options. The only odd thing about this is, is if we sell the 25 strike now, we are uh, a, a little bit in the money on our trade as opposed to being a little bit out of the money on the option contract that we're selling. But if we sell the 25 strike put, and we go a point and a half in the money and we buy the 2650 strike put. So that's in the money on the put with the underlying stock at 2479. Let's see what that trade would be, be looking at. So this is the long put spread. And we don't we, we have to we end up paying a little bit more for this trade because the option that we're selling is already in the money in this scenario. So what we have here is we're paying a net debit of 80, uh, 94 cents to the account. So we got a net debit of 94 cents. And the width of the spread is a dollar fifty, so we're one fifty minus ninety four. We're looking at a fifty six cent upside. So, not quite the upside that we have on the call side, if we are correct. Uh, so, ninety four cent is the net debit. Width of the spread is a dollar fifty. That means that we have fifty six cents potential upside. Now, on either of these spreads, uh, we're, one of them we're going to be wrong on, correct? In other words, the market can't go up and go down at the same time. So we will look at this trade next week, and we'll pick the one that that didn't go the direction that we wanted to, and we will look at trying to adjust the trade now. The reason why we should be able to adjust it is if we're 20, because we're 23 days out to expiration right now, and we're going to have some time premium left in these option contracts. So the fact that we're going so far out in time is what 
makes this trade in interesting and allows us to adjust the trade. Now, if it makes a huge move here and the underlying moves more than a dollar fifty, it goes two dollars or three dollars. Well, then if it's a gap opening, it's very hard for us to go on out and adjust the trade. But we're going to look at it and we're going to look at it specifically after earnings. Okay, so that's it for this episode of Options Playbook Radio. If you have a topic you'd like to discuss on the show or a question you'd like us to answer on the program, we now have a Facebook page specifically for Options Playbook Radio. You can go to facebook.com slash tradeking and send a question directly to me there and see archived versions of Options Playbook Radio. Or you can send your emails directly to me at the options guy at tradeking.com. And as always, you can connect with me via the Trade King Trader Network in my blog called The Options Guy. Thanks for listening. We'll be back at the same time, same place next week. Until then, may all the options you bought finish in the money and all the ones you sold finish out. The Options Playbook was brought to you by Trade King Group. Anything mentioned today is for educational purposes and is not a recommendation or advice. Options involve risk. Please refer to tradeking.com slash ODD to review additional risks involved with trading options. Securities offered through TradeKing LLC, member FINRA and SIPC. The preceding program was a production of the Options Insider Radio Network. For more quality options programs, visit www.theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app, available in iTunes and on Google Play. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at twitter.com slash options, facebook.com slash the Options Insider or via questions at theoptionsinsider.com. 